Hi everyone, thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. It's Tuesday the 17th of March. Now as you know, we uh, put loads of information into these videos and they take a long time to produce as well. The reason we're able to keep the website free of charge is because we display adverts on there and it's your continued support coming back to the website using the charts using the various forecasts and watching the videos that generates the revenue which means that uh, we can keep the website free of charge so we uh, haven't said it for a while but just wanted to say thank you for your continued support for that and also thanks to the private clients as well who uh, use our forecasts and then get in touch and uh, we produce specialized forecasts for them too so it's a great big thank you and a big hug all round. We're trying to do something a little bit different here at WeatherWeb and I hope you agree that it seems to work. Yes, you can get forecasts from a myriad of places, but uh, I think ours are uh, just that little bit special, don't you? Now, uh, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly so far uh, in March. You can see how we've had um, quite a significant trough out here, look, in the Atlantic with higher than normal heights across the UK and through the north and the east of Europe as well. And this trough featured down here across the Mediterranean and northern parts of Africa. Um, what that's meant is that the more unsettled conditions have been out in the Atlantic um, and the UK basically has escaped the worst of the weather conditions uh, so far in March with the jet stream being unable to break through. This is surface pressure, so this is the surface pressure anomaly so far in March. And you see how pressures have been below normal, exactly as you expect them to be, with that trough so close by. But generally, look, near and normal pressures across the UK, high pressure across Scandinavia, blocking the um, eastward progression of the jet stream. And that's meant that so far temperatures actually near normal across the UK, much of Western Europe, but colder you can see there across the eastern parts of the states, northeastern parts of Canada, but significantly warmer than normal across Scandinavia and northern parts of Russia. Rainfall-wise, that rain's been kept out in the Atlantic associated with that trough, as we've just seen, and the green colours there through the British Isles indicating rainfall close to or below normal for the time of year so far. Now things do look as if they are going to be subtly changing over the next few days with the jets finally managing to break through. This is the uh, 7 to 10 day mean of the 500 millibar flow. We've got the ECMWF on the left here, we've got the GFS on the right. And what we're seeing here from the ECMWF and from the GFS is the trough here across the eastern parts of the states. Ridge building look in the Atlantic and the ECMWF wanted to make far more of that ridge build through the British Isles. The uh, GFS actually wants to keep a shortwave trough through the country during this period but the ECMWF just not seeing it. So the GFS is certainly the more unsettled of the models just at the moment. And the story it's telling does seem to make sense. This is the 500 millibar height uh, for this morning. Here's the jet stream coming around here. There's the trough look that we've seen in the Atlantic. Another little trough here. And then that uh, pumping northwards of warm air, which is basically creating this uh, center of high heights across Scandinavia. A little cutoff feature starting to get going west of Portugal and another feature across the UK. It's that one actually that's been responsible for the bits and pieces of rain that we've seen around, even though we're under relatively high pressure. Now, in a week's time, those troughs have finally managed to break their way eastwards. We've got this jet still coming across the Atlantic look with um, troughs here and here dancing around within the flow, moving their way eastwards. This cutoff feature look by then has drifted towards the south of Spain. So the jet has picked up. That means that conditions are more unsettled. And it looks as if that pattern tries to stick with us. But what's interesting here, look, is notice again by the 29th, that ridge building across northern parts of Russia, pumping northwards again. This is its warm air, getting its way northwards, being able to build that ridge and a strong jet here coming in across the Atlantic and across the north of the UK. But look, high the normal, uh, sorry, high heights off the east of the Azores. This ridge feature here built through the UK as well. So it's kind of a north-south split where the north is seeing the worst of the conditions. The south is in uh, dry conditions. And with this plunge here of cooler air getting into the med, it exacerbates this uh, upper, upper uh, low that we see there to the west of Sicily. And actually what then tends to happen is that that whole pattern then gets itself established for 
the low that's in the Mediterranean to drift off further south for us to pick up more of an easterly flow across much of Europe for that ridge to be building in further across the British Isles uh, into the middle part of Maine. Eventually what you might find is that this area of uh, high heights drifts its way back westwards and perpetuates the easterly flow through the UK into April and that's kind of what the CFS is trying to pick up on today. This is the CFS week 2 rainfall ending 30th of March and yes it's showing rain across the UK nothing particularly too serious and certainly eastern parts generally drier uh, thanks to that westerly flow and the shelter being given uh, from the westerly wind but quite wet across the northern western parts of Scotland uh, down through western parts of England as well but then look what happens week three rainfall pattern showing the higher heights building off towards the east look here's the trough now in the Atlantic here there's the high off towards the east and here's the easterly flow coming in on the back of it and this is the upper low uh, centered across uh, southern parts of Europe so what it's trying to do is to try and get some drier air back in from the east and that's still evident look into week four so dry conditions across the UK not completely dry you notice there but certainly a tendency towards dry weather this hints at probably a fair amount of cloud again pretty similar to what we've got now most of the rainfall though looks staying to the west of the country not much over the UK and then even into uh, week five this is what I meant, look, about high drifting east. Notice what's happened there. And what you would find with this situation is you'd have low the normal heights down here. Uh, you would get the pattern uh, probably developing into a trough getting down here into the UK. But again, it's not showing that much rainfall. Yes, some showers come again on a north or northwesterly around the back edge of that high. Pretty cool conditions, but certainly uh, it looks as if the wetter of the weather getting into central and southern parts of Europe rather than through the UK. And it certainly does back up Hoog van den Doel's ideas uh, from the analogues. This was the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly for April, May and June. And uh, you see here, look, the higher the normal heights towards the northwest of the UK with that high building through, look, low the normal heights towards the east. And it's a shame that the map's split, but effectively what this is is the ridge in here and then the trough coming down through there across eastern parts of Europe. And notice the low in the mid-Atlantic area as well. So... It kind of uh, backs up those ideas from the analogue. We'll talk more about those ideas in the uh, premium forecast for April and May, which will be online very soon. Um, now, we've got a solar eclipse coming up on Friday, and we've got a special forecast video out for that, which we'll be updating every day. So you can go and watch that now. But I think for the time being, that's enough, don't you? Uh, I'll leave you with that then. Uh, thanks again for watching, whatever you're doing. Have a great day. Thanks for watching weatherweb.net. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and keep the sun shining. Bye for now.